Hi, everybody. It's Jessica Stone at Stansbury Research, and I've got Eric Wade here on the line all the way from his home office in California. Eric, of course, is the editor of Crypto Capital, and we've got some big news in crypto, um, Eric, breaking right now. Um, we've already seen the U.S. banks now enable themselves to provide cryptocurrency services for customers. Let's just talk about the significance for crypto investors who, of course, you're in close touch with now. How are they seeing this? There's this, this certain group of cryptocurrency investors who will respond very positively and think, oh, thank goodness, the bank is a safe place to store my assets, like gold in a safety deposit box or a, a you know, nice diamond or a title to your house or something like that. And they'll see this as a, as a, a positive development because an asset that they want to own they can have somebody else safeguard it. And the banks are seeing it as a positive because uh, cryptocurrencies have been maybe a little, um, uh, a, a little outlier for, mm -hmm. for banks. And it's this interesting relationship that cryptocurrencies and banks have because uh, cryptocurrencies make transactions faster and easier around the world. And that used to be what banks were for right? The banks would move money around the world, but cryptocurrencies are really, really good at that. So banks have always looked at cryptocurrencies as, is it a competitor or is it, is it a technology I should adopt? The office of the comptroller of the currency is saying, hey, banks should be able to hold these assets, kind of paves the way for banks to then say, okay, we're a step closer maybe to solving all of these problems, uh, taking care of assets for our, our, our customers and maybe using the technology and maybe not being outcompeted by this technology. And it's all wrapped into this sort of this one positive development. You follow all of the cryptocurrencies, but which ones do you think are going to benefit the most now? The first one most obvious is Bitcoin. And it's uh, as far as it saw aspects, a little bit of a rally on the news. Yeah, absolutely. It moved up a few percent just on the possibility of it. And what I was about to mention is that uh, by cryptocurrency standards, it is the biggest and the most popular and the most widespread, um, probably a little more volatile of an asset as far as the price goes than most bank customers are used to. There's other cryptocurrencies that aren't volatile at all. And that would be like a stable coin like Tether. And I would expect that to be another one that banks really want to be able to hold because it's something that is that's tethered to the U.S. dollar. As a bank customer, am I going to see any immediate benefit to my bank holdings or anything else I do with the bank, whether it's um, depositing, withdrawing, holding a mortgage, a personal loan, and home equity loan? Are any of these banks and services going to be better or quicker because banks are doing this? Not immediately, but the expertise that they're gonna have to develop in-house, and, and some of them are ahead of the game on this. Some of them have been working on this for quite a while, but the expertise that they have to, they have to develop in order to be able to safeguard the cryptocurrencies, they're going to start looking at that as an asset and a competitive advantage. So I wouldn't be surprised if a few months down the road, you do start seeing things that say uh, maybe um, remittances or something like that, right? Send money overseas and they'll package it as the um, you know, XYZ bank transfer or something and, and start adding them in as services that you can use the bank's level of services and really what they're doing is they're using uh, cryptocurrency technology that they had to learn in order to be able to safeguard them for their customers but bank customers are getting these little tiny yields cryptocurrency investors are getting much bigger yields right now on their cryptos and so i think that makes sense that cryptocurrency investors know it, sometimes it's a risk worth taking to take care of their own investments uh, you know, and own them themselves Will banks be able to offer better yields on their products because they're going crypto? They, they should be able to, um, depending on how they integrate them. The first step is just being able to hold the cryptocurrency investments. But uh, I can imagine that there's going to be some um, trained individuals that are you know, portfolio managers or risk assessors that are looking at this thinking, wait a minute, if there's an investment out there that's paying 8%, or seven or 10 or whatever it is, I wanna know more about this. So I expect that to come down, uh, come down the road pretty quickly as well because that would be a huge competitive advantage for banks to be able to offer the yields that cryptocurrencies already are.
Yeah, I, for one, would uh, be very excited about that, as I'm sure most people um, in our audience would be. Um, what else does this move pave the way for in terms of um, bringing those two cultures closer together and giving advantages to both bank customers and crypto investors? Exposure to, of cryptos to more customers. And cryptocurrencies are right now owned by less than 10% of uh, Americans and maybe even smaller percentages of that around the world. So uh, cryptocurrencies also are scarce in some respects that um, bank products aren't. So getting more people to own them should make cryptocurrencies perform better and actually go up in value. And at the same time, banks have always been really good at dealing with cash, dealing with uh, actual real dollars and tra- you know, your paycheck or something like that. It's easier to get your paycheck into a bank than it is to get it into cryptocurrencies. So I think those are, gonna, those are also going to help each other a lot as those two merge. All right. Our thanks to you, Eric Wade, there there with Crypto Capital. And if you would like to subscribe to Crypto Capital, just hover on your screen over the subscribe icon and we can connect you to him there. We also would just ask you if you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Of course, you can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Thanks for watching. That's all for now.